I want to buy a copy of Bone Storm. Here's 99 cents. Huh. Allow me to summarize the proposed transaction. You wish to purchase Bone Storm for 99 cents. Net profit to me, negative $59. Oh, oh, please take my $59. I don't want it. It's yours. <laughs> Welcome back to the Thinking Critical Comic Book Podcast. It's time for Slabbed and Raw, episode number seven, the comic book collecting show here on the on the channel. And as you can see, we are a man down. Doc Doc-less. is not with us this week. Apparently, he's he's got a little he's got a little condition, and he needs to go see the doctor. Yeah, his man cave is, is isn't doing well. His man cave just didn't <laughs> didn't cut it this week. He <laughs> needs to go in for <laughs> to go see the doc. So without it, we're still we're still here. We're going to talk about comic book collecting. Obviously, I've got the other regulars, the co-host of Slapped and Raw, Paley. How you doing? <laughs> I guess we're regular. <laughs> I don't know. I feel pretty irregular, regular irregular most of the time, but uh, n- n- that's not involving my man cave either. But uh, yeah, sorry for Doc. I mean, prayers and thoughts out for him, and I uh, hope he gets to feeling better. He's uh, you know a little dizzy or something like that today. And if you'll send your prayers to him, well, uh, when you hear this, I would very much appreciate it. You know, we we all love Doc. He's he's salty. He hates France, but you know he's he's a really good guy. So, you know, and millennials, and millennials. And millennials. Yeah, he hates yeah. France and millennials. The Queen, the Queen. <laughs> but you know, everybody's got their quirks. You know, I hate sardines, and oh, anyway. it's kind of a weird thing to hate. Sardines are delicious. Also, <laughs> with us from from Berkeley, California, from Fantastic Comics, Yule Carter. How you doing? I don't even like Caesar salad. Ugh. <laughs> really? Oh, well, I don't like anchovies that much. Uh, you don't like <laughs> croutons? Anchovies. <laughs> I like everything else but that whole uh, an- anchovy sauce. Whatever. <laughs> the Caesar, Caesar salad. salad. The Caesar, yeah. yeah, it's got a little yeah. anchovy sauce. Yeah. It's weird. It's just salt. <laughs> it is a lot of salt. I don't add salt to anything. I, I got plenty as it is. And you know <laughs> what? Right. I got plenty for Doc not being here, too. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll make up for it. So we got a, 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 a treasure trove of things to talk about, some interesting things. First up, we got to talk about the latest comic leak auction. Oof. Hey, we've been seeing the market for, for keys and and uh, prize comics going up, up, up. And has the bubble burst? What happened at this auction? Oh, I think uh, what happened was the last Heritage auction kind of blew the, you know, how a volcano, you know, will we'll keep erupting until the top of it blows off well i think that blew the last heritage one blew the top off the mountain and uh yeah uh books that are fairly common uh you know hulk 181 giant size x-men one fairly common but extremely hot keys they took a hit you know they they uh they did not they did not handle it very well this last comic link you know they 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 dropped i'd say correction probably 10 to 20 percent so uh yeah yeah hopefully that's a trend downward because we need a correction right now we really really need a softening in the market we need one because it's been way too way too hot for way too long and uh but we we pretty much figured out why we'll talk about that later (laughs) <laughs> it's uh, very extreme sales on these uh, items, also. Yeah, I mean, it's not just high; it's extreme. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about you know <laughs> some books that have gone ten x in one year. You know, holy shit! You know that's that's insane. You know, it's books that we see ten percent changes, fifteen percent changes a year, and we think, oh, that's pretty good. You know, that's that's about you. That's any time of return on investment of like fifteen percent, like you're happy. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah, in the in the world of investment, six you target five to six percent a year in the world of investment. You're doing good. You know that's what uh, Rudy from Alpha Investments. You know, you should, everybody should follow him if you don't on YouTube. But uh, he's he's amazing. He used to be a broker, uh, one of the best brokers in the industry, before he retired to to do cards. And uh, the guy is a genius, and he's you know he says five and a half to six percent a year is the target, and we're doing 60, 80, 100, 500 percent on some books, a thousand percent. It's crazy, man. It's 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 just I mean a book gets hot, and uh, 
you know, it goes up in value. And I, everybody sees this. You know, you see like the first appearance of the TVA from from Loki. You know, Time Variance Authority. That book went from you know being a ten dollar book to being a two hundred dollar book practically overnight. But that's when something just catches fire. That's normal. Uh, all the all the copies out there get bought up, you know, and then you know people put them up there and they put them up for sale real high. Uh, now, though, we're seeing books that have already been hot for quite a while and they go up five hundred percent or more, and that's not right. That's not normal for n- seemingly almost no reason whatsoever. So it's it's wild. Now, with this happening at Comically, do you think there are going to be some people? with high valued comic books that are maybe are a little bit more hesitant to maybe put their comic book out there for auction because they don't want to set a precedent to lower actually, you know, the value of what their comic could be. Uh, well, it could go one of two ways. It could be, uh, we need to, I need, Whoa, I need to stop. I'm not going to sell something. It could not, I, could, I might not get as much as I want or, Oh my God, we're going to be heading towards a dark place and I need to get this sold as fast as I can. It really depends. Is a person a collector that's hoping to maximize the amount they get from the book? Or is it a speculator or investor that's like, I need to get that money out so I can either pay on my credit card or I can, you know, I've got, I bought this with leverage or, you know, and they need to get that money out. And if that's the case, then you're going to see a flood. And I think it's going to be a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. No, you want to be in column A though, right? Yeah, you (laughs) don't want to. That's why I tell people don't buy on leverage because when situations like this happen, you can go, whoa, I'll pull back and I'll wait. Now, an investor probably can take the hit as far as, or is probably willing to take a, a hit because they realize there's a longer term, right? Right. Whereas a spec speculator is probably looking to flip it a little quicker, right? Yeah, it's all about leverage. Mm-hmm. You know, are they using are they using credit cards? Are they, you know, is it a are they, they got a HELOC on their house? You know, and they bought like two hundred thousand dollars worth of comics. Oh my god! I know a guy did that. You know, he did that last year. Because yeah. I always spend real money to buy my comic books. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like everybody does. But I mean, I know that's stupid to think that because just the stuff I sell on a weekly basis goes on a lot of people's credit cards. Yeah. Or I don't pry. It could be a debit card, but you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I use credit cards card and everything. I use credit card, but I pay my credit cards off. You know, right. uh, within the within you know before I start having to pay any interest on the course. Right. But a lot of people don't. You know, when and, I was younger, I didn't realize what like credit was. It's just a you know a secured loan for whatever you want for a yeah. really really shitty rate. Yeah. So I would like well, use my credit card to and go to the bar, and then ooh. one day it clicked in my head. And I was like, I'm paying interest on beer I pissed out six months ago. Yeah. That was stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I I paid all my credit card yeah. off. Oh, like never, it's never happened again. <laughs> but yeah, that dude, he's he quarter. I think it's about a quarter million dollars home equity line of credit on a, on his quarter million dollar home, and uh, which is around here. That's that's a nice house, around here. Uh, it may be like a little cracker box, you know, in in San Francisco. But it's no, nice it would one, be like a million but... dollar home in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, two hundred fifty might not buy you a nice house in San Francisco, though. <laughs> no, no, it probably wouldn't even buy you a small condo. We got a apartment but, or something, maybe. Yeah, you might get a you might get a dumpster or something for that. <laughs> but uh, the uh, but yeah, he he did that and he bought into a huge amount of really really pretty nice books. I sold him quite a few of them, and uh, but he got lucky. Twenty one came around, and it was just hot as hell, and he sold his books, put them up on eBay, and just. St- fire sold the hell out of them and made like 50 percent you know in like eight months so he he did all right he did really great and i told him i said you i said play with fire sometimes you're gonna get burned though i said yeah you've already this is the (laughs) second mortgage on your house basically you know and what are you gonna do if you if you can't sell these books you know and he's like yeah you're right so after all said and done he made about 50 percent after everything was paid so he he came out of it just fine, but that's a risk that I would not take. Mm-hmm. Life is all about timing, Pele. 
It is. He did really <laughs> well, but most people don't. And, uh, you know, you ride the lightning, sometimes you get fried. But, now, if you're a collector and don't care about investment in that way, you know, you, you want to get these hot keys, and mm -hmm. if they're not being sold for as much and people are trying to get rid of them, is, this is possibly or soon going to be a big time for people to want to start buying them, right? Yep. Yeah, this, it goes without saying, it's going to be interesting by the end of, by the end of this year. And uh, that's when you want to buy. Not, not yet. Not unless so, it's just something you really, unless you get a really good deal and something you desperately want, you know, wait a while. Wait till, right. wait till the sellers start feeling a little heat. But you and might be able to get a higher grade cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, eh, just a thought. Sorry, but this isn't affecting everything, right, Paley? Like, it's action comics ain't coming down to earth. No. These these are like Silver Age comics that are high in demand because they have really cool appearances in them. But there's actually they're not as rare as as you would think. Yeah, like, these are silver and bronze enough, books. Yeah, enough comics out there to, to fill the market. Yeah, these are silver and bronze books that they're plentiful. Yeah. yeah, these are books that, except maybe in like the nine point eights and stuff like that except maybe at the really highest, highest grades, you know, they're books that are plentiful. And, uh, you know, like uh, Ultimate Ultimate Fallout 4. God, I hope that you've already sold your copy of Ultimate Fallout 4 before too long. You know, it's uh, it because that's a book that's going to come down to earth really fast and really hard because there are a lot of them. And New Mutants 98 is another book that's going to be hit probably pretty hard with this. Uh, you know, they're books that, that are too high for no reason at all except just people drove ASM the market 300 out. yep another book it's another book it's already starting to feel it you know that's a book that's probably dropped 20 percent in the last month and say you think shot, about man. that with the amount of comics that are out there it's like yeah it's i mean you gotta figure there's a huge amount of these comics out there that are hot 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 books there's a lot of them out there and but it's still a small amount compared to what card collectors look at. You know, it's still tiny compared to 2.5 million of a rookie baseball card. You know, it's, it's, but yeah, it's still, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of them out there for the amount of collectors there are. It's just that speculators churned it up. And uh, because they didn't realize, hey, you gotta you look at the numbers and, you know, in comparison to the peer group and be like, what is rare and what is it? Right. And there's plenty of that common available. Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, and I think that the market was too low for a long time. You know, it really was. It just, uh, people weren't buying because they figured it was books that they could just buy sometime down the line or something like that. And, uh, but when, when the feeding frenzy started, everything went wild. And the books that needed to go up in value did, and they overshot. You know, they overshot where they probably should be. And, uh, of course, people are going to want more money rather than less, so they're going to, you know, ask for the most they possibly can. And uh, that's just the way market, markets and work. And they do. <laughs> and they do. <laughs> and they do. It shocks me when I see some of the prices people want for things. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the Only thing is, though, they can... add it to your shipping. You know that's what you're going to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they, they overcharge and everything like that. But if somebody's willing to pay that much... That's what it's worth. Yeah, that's what it's worth. So It's, it's true. It's true. Yeah. And I see uh, a lot of stupid people... I had a baseball card collection. I told my grandpa, I was like, you see this Shaquille O'Neal? It's already worth 50 bucks. He goes, really? Go find somebody to give you 50 bucks because I don't think it's worth that. Like, he makes a point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Worth, it's it, worth uh, what, what the what person will give you, not what the book says it's worth. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. just an idea. <laughs> cards, are, cards are really bad about that, too, because it's like, yeah, this card's worth 50 bucks, but the most you'll ever get it for is like $20 from, you know, the card dealer because, you know. Do you think people will do that in the guide so you feel better when you buy it and you start going through your collection? Like, ooh, you know, it's got the up arrow and it's $35 that's, now, knowing it's full fun. well. That, it's that's fun the retail fun. price. That is the yeah, retail exactly. price. <laughs> yeah, that is like the best possible price if the stars align right, you know, and, and the person selling in a retail environment with, with some jabroni who's got extra money. Try and talk them down. 
yeah that's that's what somebody will pay <laughs> you know and uh but but realistically it's probably about half that you know but uh but lately with comics it's there has been no guides you know we've been in we've been in this weird frontier you know that what's a book worth i don't know let's look and see what ebay had what did, what do they sell for today you know and uh that's what we were talking about before the damn comic shops with the signs up and say we need to check ebay you know it's, yeah there's got to be a way to figure that problem out Bailey, where you, you kind of look at the trends that are going on and just have an, a rough figure of what this thing could be worth high end, low end. Kind of yeah, idea. GP analysis, uh, GPA. You can check on the the website for the comic comic GPA. Uh, it's their their price analysis. They'll tell you within just a couple percent where it is and where it could go and and all that. It's a good site. It's really good. Uh, Go Collect also does uh, the average fair market value, which is fine. It works really well. That's usually what I charge is the fair it, charge the average fair market value because i don't want to gouge people you know but sometimes there's books that are just really hard to get a hold of and i've got one in really high grade and you know i'm going to put it up for the most that i can because i may not ever see it again Mm -hmm. so that's different though than a lot of the stuff we've been seeing lately but uh yeah it's uh it's wild out there and now that the prices are starting to come down people have people are going to probably be slowing down or, or and on the other end of the spectrum you're going to have people that are going to start trying to sell more because with the market cooling off it could be another two or three years before it heats up again mm-hmm. yeah that's true uh, yeah, i uh this is a good time for for uh shoppers now and hopefully stores also because if someone's like really worried about yeah you know, i mean you're never going to get a lot of money uh selling to a comic store um but you know, there's always consignment and things like that, also. And it could be a boon for stores to have a product in in that they haven't had for a while, also. Yeah, well, it, so, it depends on the stores what they pay. Uh, we probably pay on the high side because I do mm-hmm. a lot of I do a lot of churn. I do a lot of book churning turnover, and uh, I pay probably on the high side of that. But I know a lot of shops that you know they won't even pay t- ten or twenty percent of guide. You know, they're just. I have a formula that, like, if I if I think I could sell it tomorrow, that's yeah. a lot of money I'm going to give you for that book. But as I start feeling how long it's going to take for it actually you have to, to rent move, the shelf space when you pay for, exactly, <laughs> pay for it. you know, so that 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 plays in. So yeah, it could be I'm giving you ten percent of something that's really valuable, but. I'm also, I also know that it takes a long time to go through that whole thing of Star Wars that you're trying to sell me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there's sometimes two or it's three cool good to issues. have that comic book that no one's ever seen in their lifetime sitting on your wall, right? For Bring sure. Bring it in to look at. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> how much is that phantom over there? Uh, uh, do you have any classics illustrated? You know, some old person comes in and asks for it and... I'm lugging this heavy ass box to show them their childhood and they don't leave with anything. <laughs> yeah, that's, those are books that uh, stuff like that, like the Dell four color in the classics illustrated stuff. I, they're, they're comics that I love. I love sure. those comics. I mean, that's, that's like my childhood, you know, and stuff. And, uh, I, I, I adore them, but you know, I can't give a lot for them. You know, nobody loves like, my childhood. Nobody loves my childhood. <laughs> You know, and you can only do so much with, you know, 500 copies of Moby Dick. So, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's not hot, hot, you know, they've gotten a lot warmer lately, but it's still, you know, Moby Dick, you know, it's not X-Men, you know, it's not Amazing Spider-Man, so. Right. But having an awesome comic on your shelf is awesome. (laughs) So, Paley, if, if somebody's out there and they're getting worried, they see this comic leak auction, they see the conversation here, they're like, oh, my goodness, I need to get rid of this as fast as possible. What do you suggest? Go to the comic shop and get the best price. Go on consignment. Go to eBay. Where should where do you think the best place is to get the most bang for your buck if you're looking to unload something that you might think is going to depreciate in the near future? Okay. Well, first, don't ever sell under duress. 
that's my that's my main that's my main recommendation there unless you just absolutely need the money don't sell under duress if you feel like you're not going to be able to get what you think you should get then wait uh if you do need to sell uh probably the best answer that i can give you is go to mycomicshop.com and uh sell it on consignment there and uh they will handle if it's a raw book they handle the grading and everything they'll put it up they'll say okay this is a 7.0 you know this is what it you know this is the range that it's worth what do you want to sell it for and you put your price on there and they'll take a cut of that and they charge a small percentage to the buyer as a buyer's premium and then you're done and you you get your money when it sells uh that's that's probably the most painless and it's probably the one that's going to have give you the most money yeah, unless unless yeah the, it'll take the longest it'll take a little bit longer than ebay um sometimes ebay can be the bit can be the best option because if you if you know what you've got and you're going to put it up there you're going to sell it you know you can, you can probably turn it around in just a couple of days mm-hmm. yeah. but uh, also if you have a slabbed books uh, cgc cbcs that type of stuff there's uh an app called short boxed yeah and uh i think it's only slab things but For right um now. i have a customer that after i press their comics and they send it out to cgc they put it right up on short boxed yeah so um and he's had good success with every aspect <laughs> yeah they, they have the smallest amount of fees mm-hmm. so they're 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 more hands-on as far as what you have to be providing as far as all that uh so it depends on how much you know how much you're willing to, how, as far as work to put into it the quickest fastest the quickest way that's that's lowest effort is uh my comic shop just mm-hmm. you know give it to them and they handle everything right Another yeah, way but that could take the link. longest. It could take months to get the price that you're asking for. Yeah, and a uh, Comic Link takes even longer than that. But you know, you're going to get even more. You know, because Comic Link auctions. You know, you send them your raw books. They press them. They clean them. Hmm. They 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 clean them. They press them. They send them off to CGC. They get them back and they put them up for auction and they're sold. And it could take up to six months, six nine months. But mm-hmm. uh, you're going to realize the most out of your but. Who knows what the market's going to look like in six or nine months from now? You know, it could be it could either be blood in the streets or it could have already started to be going back up. We don't know. And we're already waiting on our CGCs that are going to take six or nine months, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, interesting. You should bring that up. We're going to talk about this CGC sale. Might as well get to it now. Uh, some updates, and I did want to talk about. Oh, I need. I got a misspelling there. I got an uppercase when it should be a lowercase. I'm embarrassing myself right now. Uh, possible collusion to comics. So Pele, there's always been this rumor that that the comic book market is almost like diamonds, where there's like this focal point or, or uh, key players that hoard diamonds to control the market and control the pricing, and you know they, they let them go out at a specific rate to, to keep the diamond prices at a certain pr- price. Mm-hmm. And it's, the rumor is that they're certain collectors out there that are hoarding some of these really desirable comic books because they don't want to flood the market and depress some values. Is yeah. that true or is that just BS? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's true. Oh. And it's BS. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's a, yeah, again, little column A, little column B. You've got people out there that absolutely have like 400, 500 copies of Hulk 181. You know, that have, you know, 500 copies of giant size x-men number one stuff like that yeah there's people out there that are like that you know i've I've seen them you know i've seen these collections i've seen these hordes and uh hordes not the other word just want to Mm -hmm. make sure people heard that right but uh yeah i've seen them and some some of them are people that are you know either trying not necessarily manipulate the market but they don't want to they don't want to flood the market and uh you know they look at it as like their retirement and then you've got other people that are just batshit crazy, and they just love that particular comic, and and they want it, they want them, and uh, again back to Rudy Alpha Investments, you know he's got Magic the Gathering Alpha and Beta Limited Edition when the game first started, you know he's got some of those cards that are worth fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollars a piece, 
and he just hoards them because he loves the cards. And uh, there are people like that that just love the comics and they hoard them. You know, it's not like stocks or bonds or something like that where you don't really have anything physical to hold on to. You know, you actually have this physical piece of artwork that you love and uh, they just buy them and they, they just, before long, they have so many of them that, you know, that actually does influence the market. So, so you're saying it's unintentional, though. A lot some of, of them, some of the times, yeah. some, some of the times time. it is, and some of the times it isn't. And you've got these people out there that are just assholes, you know, or they, they're people that that are investors and they just want to get as many of this copy as they can, so that at the right time they can sell off several of them and make money. And then when the market starts to go back down, they wait, you know, and. Uh, is that is that right? Well, that's their that you know that's that's their business. It's their yeah. it's their property. Yeah, it's their property. They want to buy it and hold on to it and sell it later. That's that's their business. You know, it, it may not. Some collector may, collectors may get pissed about it because they're like, I just want one, and this stuff over here has like five hundred of them. You know, sorry, you know, he's been doing this for like forty years. You know, he bought them when they were hundred bucks a piece, and now they're worth five thousand. You know, it's. That's the way it goes. I'm thinking of when Homer was the uh, prank monkey for Mr. Burns, <laughs> and he had him eat, eat what, like an AF-15 or a Spider-Man one, you know, right in front of the comic yeah. store owner. Here's your money, or munch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's crazy, you know. We obviously we t- we talked about the CGC uh, parent company being bought up by a by like a venture capitalist company looking to. Uh, do some things with the market. You made some predictions regarding uh, they were likely going to go start buying up a lot of these really rare keys, breaking them off, and kind of maybe potentially selling them in NFTs. And you can see there c- could be some market manipulation in that aspect if, mm-hmm. if you're if you go down the rabbit hole too far. Did you hear any updates about that, Pele? Uh, well, yeah, uh, that's what they're doing. Uh, the uh, you know it's no big surprise that that Blackstone along with BlackRock and several other you know hedge hedge fund companies you know the big large huge conglomerates uh, that they're buying up houses and sitting on them they're buying up this and sitting on it well they're also doing it in the collectibles markets especially with comics you know they're buying them up and they're they're going to they've been buying them up, they've already been buying them up for a while now and. Uh, and they're going to be NFTs. You know, they're they're going to be selling pieces of them in NFTs. And uh, like I was telling people, buy the damn books because you're not going to see them. You're not in 40, 50 years. You're not going to see some of these books ever again. And because they're going to be owned by the people who are then going to sell NFTs of them and lock them away in a vault somewhere. And uh, it's already happening. It's been happening. Uh, I was I've heard it firsthand myself that this is the direction that uh that uh blackstone is going in and already heading that way and uh cgc purchase was you know a part of it and uh you know basically so they could get into you know the collectibles market with a well-known brand and you know somebody that's integral in uh, as far as grading and marketing and everything like that in the comic book space about relationships soon they're going to have cgc you know cgc grading where you know you you buy a cgc certificate that is a digital certificate that is cgc a, certified nfts right that's it <laughs> and uh, that's what it's going to be and my head uh, is swimming <laughs> yeah that's it you know and they're the and that's part of what drove the market up all this time you know, I can't wait till I have an NFT of my favorite action figure as a kid. Like yeah. I can't play with it anymore, but I've got like a little. Like a oh little yeah, I got my GI Joe. I got a hologram of it. I got a Dude, Cobra but do Commander. Do you have it in Kung Fu Grip? Yeah. Well. <laughs> no, but you won't. You know, you won't. You won't care because you know you'll have your NFT of it. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, it's funny because like so much stuff is like going to digital and they really, I mean, I feel it every time I look at my collection and there's way too much stuff and I really have to call it and all that other stuff. But 
there's one part of me that wants to move the physical aspect of my collecting hobby, but then there's the realization that I might not be able to buy it or I never really own it if it's in that format. And then, you know, you see your streaming services that are getting rid of programs. And now all of a sudden I'm, uh, I'm buying DVDs of things again. And it's like, yeah, I thought I was out of the original content and stuff. We just, and now Paley wants me to buy the damn comic also. I want what? I want what? I'm just joking. I don't, I don't want anybody to do it. I'm telling people go out and buy the damn books. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you really do. Yeah. I swear to God, if you're not doing it, if you've not done it already, and you've got the means and you've i don't really want to buy this daredevil number one well guess what before too long you're not going to be able to you know and uh you know why because this company over here has like has bought like a thousand copies of it and they're going to sell them in nft form and that's the only way that you're ever going to see it again and it's 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 sad I think that's extremely depressing because I am a comic lover. I am a collection, comic collecting lover. You know, I love collecting physical things. You know, I don't, I'm not into digital assets and stuff like that, except for currency. You know, I like, I like Bitcoin and stuff like that. That's a currency though. It's not a collectible. And this digital collectibles thing, I think is, is not for me. And I think that it's going to be harmful in that it's going to pull all these collectibles off the market and people won't have the opportunity to buy them. And uh, I, scary. I got a, got a question, Payday. So we know in Batman Damned, number one, mm-hmm. the digital version is already censored. Yeah. They're never going to reprint the book. Somebody's going to acquire it. They're going to create an NFT. Am I going to have to pay more? For just Batman's Wang than the rest of the other pages yes. of the book. Yes. Uh, that's yeah. the one I want. You know that, right? Yeah, you got to have the Wang. You know, that's <laughs> just, you know, and, that, and, and that's, 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 there's a lot of stuff out there. We're just like going to get like a, an NFT of sure. like tits or something. Like, yeah, I paid a little extra for these. They're already going back and editing <laughs> the old Scott comics. Campbell cover. Yeah. They're already going back and editing the old comics for all the for all the questionable and problematic stuff. You know, they're already removing and and changing the old books in digital format. I was I was looking at an Avengers that, you know, there was a very mild racial slur. You know, it wasn't a big deal. You know, it's it's it's, you know, what Italian people are called, you know, back long ago, you know, it's big deal whatever but uh here worse than that on cnn but uh the now they've edited that it in the digital format when you go and look at it on the marvel unlimited they've changed it and the only way that you'd know that they changed it if you have the original so there's going to be a lot of that shit going on and you're you know they're they're revising history they actually, uh, so Scott Snyder is, uh, I don't know if he, I guess he's guilty of it, or he likes to perfect. And you can read a Batman comic, and then if you read one of the collections, it will have different uh, phrases in there, you know, language and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. Sparrow did that with his um, with his Darkwing Duck when they did the the definitive edition or whatever. He, he went and changed some of the, some a couple of typos, but also he, he retouched up some of the uh, right. dialogue. Stuff. Well, the typos I can definitely understand. Uh, I, you know, I like to see warts and all. I, like I agree, warts and all, warts and all man. Uh, it's even like you know the bad coloring and stuff like that. I don't really like it touched up too much, but mm-hmm. um, you know, I can understand that. It's kind of like you know, oh, the Mona Lisa's eyes are just a millimeter too far apart. Well, we can fix that exactly now. You know, yeah, now, now your NFT is going to have it all. All well, is it really it. fixing it? Is it? It's is not. It? You know, it's, <laughs> it, it, I like that. I like. I like. It gives you a snapshot of what that of what it was like at that time, or you know, you you get to see you know, even the flaws. You know how the process went through. You know, there's a lot of comics like Fighting Allies, and you know, you've got a lot of those Submariner Human Torch covers that, oh my God, you would never see them today. You know, a lot of stuff, especially the way the Japanese were depicted and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's pretty wild. The Germans too, for that matter. And uh, you know, a lot of covers, you know, of, of hooded people and stuff. You know, I, I collect a lot of that old stuff. You know, the uh, the birth of a nation type of you know weirdness you know 
I collect all that stuff because it's it's history. You know, it's important to know where we came from so we don't end up in that place again. Well, and I think we, I don't know if we talked about it here, but, you know, DC was going to do an omnibus of the first uh, 26 issues of ba- or Detective. Yeah. And, you know, they said, oh, there's just too much stuff we got to get rid of. And they decided not to do it. And, yeah. you know, that's a shame. Not only is that, you know, I think we could see past it. You know, yeah. well, there's a really <laughs> bad racial slur. There's a really bad racial slur in one of the issues of Detective. Oh, really? That. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, there's a really bad one. And it's like, oh, it's not the N word, but it's really close. Yeah. And uh, it's well. like, ooh, I, I, I couldn't see them publishing now the way the cl- current climate is, even right. if they wanted to be historically accurate. And, uh, I mean, I'm sure those things are available on those uh, websites anyway, if you got to really see it. But it's a shame for people that want to collect things that, you know, it's not going to be available in that way. And and it's not going to be available because corporations are buying them up. And I know. That's and exactly. To even more so. Yep. That's and that's 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 where they're heading. And that's what it's going to be. And uh, I have a real big I have a huge problem with that. And uh what do we do well the only thing you can do is buy the damn books don't (laughs) don't just you know don't just let the companies corporations own them all you know Mm -hmm. and that's what's triggered i think there was a now that we're seeing in retrospect what caused this huge explosion within the comic collecting market and first you had all the all the free money that was being handed out you know and everybody got you know thousands of dollars free Mm -hmm. you know from the government that triggered that triggered the collectibles market. Then you had Bitcoin that sailed to the moon, you know, and then that's more money that flushed into people's hands, that went into people's hands that that are typically also comic collectors. Then you had all these companies out there that planning on buying up all these comic book assets so they can put them in digital format later on. You know, that was part of it. Then you had all the collectors also from cards and all these other collectibles groups the stonks that, fools <laughs> that you know they decided oh look comics don't have there's not nearly as many comics as there are cards and these prices are way too low in their opinion and that drove the prices up so you had all of these things that happen at exactly the same time while and we're on the andrea gale going what the hell are we going to do here yep and we then got you the have perfect store at the perfect storm, all of this converged at one time with the highest Dow Jones and the highest stock market totals in history. You know, and, and I'm the clown going down with the ship. Zero percent interest rates, prime zero percent prime rate at the same time. It's like holy balls, you know. It it, it was the perfect storm, and everything went up ten x, you know, or or you know five x, ten x, craziness. Case, yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's that's what caused it all. You know, now that we can see back in retrospect, we can see what caused it all. That's what it was. And plus you had the MCU. Plus you have all this other stuff. You know, it DC shows coming up every single week. New announcements for, you know, all the, you know, Netflix is coming out with such and such, you know. And so oh, there was like two or three months where there wasn't new comic books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Even that was helping it. Yeah, you know? I mean, you, you with all the crap, with all that stupid shit going on in comics, you know, with with Marvel's sales tanking, you know, in the direct market and DC not doing any better, and all you would think that the comic book collecting market would have taken a hit, but no, it just hit the accelerator, mm-hmm. and people were going back and looking for back issues. So. Yeah, and the thing is, is, and I don't know if it's necessarily FOMO, but if you're like a person that's collecting or is like, oh man, I only have 50 more issues to collect this Hulk run or something like that. And now people are buying these books at ex, you know at high rates. I'm going to yeah. have to buy my books now or else that's going to be like really super expensive later on. Yeah. And I, I've sold to people that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now what's going to happen late? What's going to be happening on down the line? Well, the market's going to correct, uh, thank God. But it's not going to be where it was before. I think people, a lot of people, are expecting. Well, I'm just, I, I, I'm just going to wait for when the prices get back to where they were. They're, they're not going back to where they were. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the, you know, the genie's out of the bottle. You know, whenever th- things like this go up, you know, there's a correction, and then there's a leveling off period. Typically, this could be different. I don't know, 
but it's not going to go back down to the bottom, you know, to the lower end where it was before, you know, back in 2018, 2019. You know, we're, we're, we're already above that and it's going to correct probably some, some books you'll see 50% correction, not many, uh, but typically in the 20 to 30% range, it'll level off and then guess what? It's going to start going up again. You know, because that, you know, that's what it does. And you have to, long, nobody can perfectly time the market. So. How long does it take uh, Overstreet Guide to uh, correct? Because, <laughs> oh, you know, number one, they only go to 9 2 when mm -hmm. they're doing their grading and their pricing. And I think, you know, everybody, 9 4, I mean, they use the numbers system. And nine four nine six nine eight is where the real money is in collecting comic books, and they don't give you prices for that estimations. Uh, how long does it take Overstreet to really uh, see a price change and then make a you know make the change and and it, you know it feels like it sticks in that like now I can go to Overstreet and look up the price of the Silver Surfer and not have to worry about you know eBay prices in a month or something like that. I'm wondering if we'll ever be able to use Overstreet again. Yeah. Frankly, uh, mm -hmm. because things change so much, and I, I don't think that's going to be changing either. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, prices are going to go back down, but it's still going to be volatile and weird, and people are still going to want to have to look and see with on the digital price guides, you know, and the GPA analysis to so the it's your fee collector and all that other stuff, yeah. and Overstreet can spend pretty much. Because you got new shows that are going to be coming out, new properties, you know, that are going to be buying up. You got all this shit out there that you know it's going to affect the value of comics, you know, in real time. And uh, I mean, I Overstreet's just, good for history. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, there is a, a value to that book, but yeah. it's not in pricing up anything that's uh, super hot right now. Yeah, I mean, I was I was Overstreet advisor for ten years, mm -hmm. you know, and. They're awesome. They're awesome company to work with, and they're they're so knowledgeable. These are the guys that that really know their shit, especially Golden, Atomic Age comics stuff like that. It's, it's awesome. They, these guys are amazing, but it's too slow. You know, it's like uh, you know, you want to know what the value of something is. Well, let me get something printed eight months ago and let me find out. You know, it's yeah. It's, they've they've got you now. If they they did go online or they did uh you know at least did a monthly supplement or something like that that would be great mm -hmm. you know at least that would that would be worthwhile but i don't think a yearly price guide except like in like we were talking classics illustrated and stuff like that you know yeah that'll tell you it'll, it'll give you a good idea what those are worth but nothing that's been published in the last 50 years that has any kind of relevance today mm -hmm. you know it's, it's, it's not it's crazy Speaking of relevance today, we've got all these new creators. We've got new characters always hitting the market. And I imagine a lot of people are wondering, who are some of these creators that are really going to be influential in the future? Who should we be looking at? Maybe start investing in their comic books and getting them in, into their own personal collection. Me personally, what I'm okay. seeing, and I might be incorrect on this one, Pele, and, and you'll you probably correct me on this. What I'm seeing are, are things that are really affecting modern comics and in the the hotness of, of the comic and the value are the the comic being adapted to the new form so what i look for when i think about this are creators that i think are creating comics that are going to be adaptable and, and be cool when they go to to a netflix streaming or maybe the big screen the first the, the creator i would keep an eye on his name is ramby you probably know him he's working on yeah. catwoman he's done the justice league dark stuff but if you go back and you look at his stuff on is it Action Labs where he did uh, Brigands mm -hmm. and then Ruin of yeah. Gold, Ruin Ruin of Thieves, Brigands Tale was a sequel. Right. Now the first one has really bad art. The second one has amazing art. The mm -hmm. sequel does. But that story is perfectly adaptable. It would be pretty cheap. You know, it's it's kind of a fantasy story. You've got a you know, you got a little rogue element, you got you got a little team that comes together on a quest. Perfectly perfectly suited to, to a streaming type service. Another book he did that I happen to love uh, was um, these Savage Shores, where it's kind of a mix of yep. Indian and, and Western like horror themes, and they kind of bring them into conflict with each other, and that would be completely amazing. 
to be adapted to like a streaming service. So I think if you look at a lot of the stuff that Ram V has done, I think a lot of it translates to other mediums very well. Because if you read his, his comics, it's certainly a comic book, but you can tell he's written a lot of prose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Death of Layla Star would be great on a Netflix also, yes. since they love to have like, you know, Indian type stuff. Uh, like India, <laughs> um, yeah. I think uh, he he's a he would be he definitely writes stuff for uh, for other mediums. I think I agree. Yeah, They're I think definitely that, transitionable. Yeah, that that's that's a great choice. Uh, Stray Dogs, Trish Forstner, Tony Fleece, Flex Fleeks. I, I can't remember his. I think it's Fleeks, but it's who Fleeks. cares? <laughs> but, uh, but holy Say it shit! Wrong, I hear. You know that's 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 huge. What's killing the children too? You know, uh, you know those. I think I think the creator owned and put, you know creator owned and published works from the indie books are going to be the big hit from this era, from this time. You know, because you're going to have these these massive you know, cult followings that are going to be based around something that's not from not from Marvel and DC. You also, know. if you're writing a Batman story, how are you going to do, uh, outdo the 80 years of history of Batman and get the story that they want to adapt on, on streaming when you can go back and do the long Halloween, you can do uh, the Dark Knight Returns, Batman Year One. You have this 80-year history of amazing stories that you're going to have to top. You go and make your own stuff, and the history is starting right there. Yeah. Well, in yeah. Batman, they like to flush elements of all of it yeah. and just put it in a movie. So, you know, if they take time to actually credit the person that comes up with it, it could be somebody from today also. Oh, yeah. we just mixed it with some Bob Finger stuff or whatever. Yeah, Batman versus Superman, where it's, uh, you know, Dark Knight Returns and sure, Death Superman. Exactly. <laughs> like, jeez. <laughs> So, uh, I I totally agree with you guys. The one thing I'll Mm -hmm. say, though, is like when we're looking at prices of miniseries, a lot of times, I'm always shocked when one of them is expensive. I mean, if we're not talking about like the first Wolverine miniseries and the death of uh, Supergirl and death of Flash, are there any? Oh, oh, and uh, Secret Wars 8. Are there any miniseries issues that are really worth it? Uh, Secret Wars 3. Uh, popped Secret up War, because Secret Wars is expensive now, but the, uh, yeah, the whole series is getting to be. It, it should be a lot more expensive, but there's just so many of them printed. Sure, uh, but uh, yeah, that number three and I think number twelve hit real hard because you know it's just keys. You know, book, first appearance of some character here or there. I'm surprised Watchmen's not one of those. It's got price value to it, yeah. and it was hard to keep it clean because of the back, the black back covers, but. I sold I I've sold thousands yeah. of Watchmen the trade and I've never sold anywhere close to one of the issues of Sandman or of Watchmen I mean uh, and it's just like it, it's a different philosophy when it comes to like that type of stuff yeah and so like maybe Stray Dogs will retain value but it's going to be hot it's hot right now if it gets made into a movie it's going to be hot. But I don't think it's like how Walking Dead was, you know, when, oh, my God, they introduced this character that was in the 50th issue of Walking Dead. And all of a sudden, everything before that and that issue is just blowing up. And, you know, people are loving the show and I have to have the issues and that type of thing. It had a huge cast of characters, you know. It did. I mean, it was just perfect for, you know. Negan's uh, coming in season five. Who's Negan? Exactly. He's got the baseball bat. When I was a kid growing up, the first time Frank Miller did something was, you know, was an expensive comic book. The first, you know, still the first Daredevil that he did was, but so did the covers that he did. That was always like fifty. You know, back in when fifty cents was something, uh, it was like a fifty cents or a dollar more on the cover just because Frank Miller did it after the fact. You know, before it was yeah. after it was new on the shelf. You know that kind of stuff. But it's not. We don't see that as much anymore. But I'm going to name a couple creators that we've we do seen. with variants. We go ahead. They do with variants. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> there are a couple of creators that have done things that have uh, increased their comics in value. Uh, Donny Cates on Venom. They uh, Venom has a lot of expensive issues, and people are still looking for that. He he did Thanos wins, you know, that stuff, and That's created the Cosmic Ghost Rider. 
So there are comics that he does, and likewise, comics that he uh, he talks about in his comics or references, uh, those have gained in, in price also. And so has Al Ewing on Immortal Hulk. We saw him borrowing, and then the first appearance of the Harpy was an expensive book. And there's no TV involved in this. No movies involved in these guys uh, creating these things, and it's pretty exciting. So um, yep. if they're going to do something in the future, and they are, you might pay attention. Yeah, Dr. Um, first appearance of Dr. Fry, Immortal Hulk number two. Yeah, yeah. That, exactly. that, book, that book went up, shot up to $100, $120 just based on the comic. Yeah. You know, and it, you know, and it, it was not, I mean, it was pretty heavily printed, but not by traditional standards. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a new series. It was just like, okay, well, there's 30,000 copies out there, 35, whatever it was. And they were all gone. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and then it went up the it went up the natural way. That book mm-hmm. ascended the natural way. It didn't go up just because overnight it went crazy. Mm-hmm. But so uh, what what are the long term prospects of all these new characters in Batman? You know, we've gotten the designer, we've got Ghostmaker, we've got Clown Hunter, we've got Mar- Miracle Molly, we've got Punchline, we've got the the Gardener, we've got the Underbroker. We got a lot of new characters in Batman. There was obviously it felt like Punchline had the most steam behind her. Do you think flooding the market with new characters ultimately in the end is maybe going to make not allow any of them to really stand out, Pele? Yeah, I think that's basically what's going to happen. You know, there's a lot of these characters that after his runs over with, we're not going to see them again, or we're going to see them on a very limited basis. Uh, I think that one or two will, might might become something more and and develop into i still think that clown hunter is my pick of all of them that's that's the most likely he's a young guy who has robin potential mm. maybe down the mm-hmm. line or he's something like that but he he could be so this is his damien <laughs> you know, but uh but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know he's a killer but maybe he can be redeemed maybe something like that happened maybe they're going to try to you know who knows? also be red hood's robin i don't think he'd be batman's robin he's he's probably gone over the line a little too much kid red hood i like that um, yeah <laughs> yeah maybe he could work with yeah maybe he could work with the him. murder hood murder hood i like it um <laughs> well also don't forget you know five years from now there's gonna be some new hot writer on batman and uh maybe they were influenced influenced by tynan's run and they're gonna take clown hunter or or Maybe even one of the lesser characters, because that's what hot writers like to do, right? And I just they're going to underbroker. The underbroker. There you go, man. Uh, and that character is going to be elevated to kingpin status, right? In but, Batman's world, and then all of a sudden, people are going, "I got to have that first appearance of the underbroker," or it's get put in a movie, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> It's expensive. So, okay. I mean, I don't yeah. have a problem with him throwing out all these new characters, but I agree with the premise that it's going to be really hard to uh, really focus on all of them or any one of them when you have so many to deal with, especially in a Batman book. I killed that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't, you know. I, I'm, my, my no, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't. Right now, I don't know if there are that many hot characters from the big two that are just that are not you know, new. Be something. No, I still it's, don't think there's been a. You don't uh, think Dylan is a new Venom? Is going to be hot? That's no. that, that's an outlier, maybe. But you know, it'll take a while. It'll take a while. Uh, the age as far yet? as long distant future, I I I don't know. I really don't know. I maybe, but I'll will put him he in be? the champions. That'll be good. Ugh. God, I Dylan and the this. champions. Wes liked it so much he had to he take walked, his headphones he, yeah, off. Yeah, he walked away. <laughs> he, he liked it so much he had to leave. This is going to be the outtake section. I can't wait. Probably. A dog. Um. I. 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 I agree with you. I was going to say James Tynan also. Yeah. He's. He's. He, he's creating the character. I mean, of all the guys, he's creating the characters for DC. He doesn't shy away from that. Mm-hmm. And he also is doing his creator-owned stuff. He has sellouts from DC that are creator-owned in Nice House on the Lake. And uh, he's got Something is Killing the Children. He's got uh, the, the offshoot of that. 
Al Ewing. The truth. Al Ewing is doing. We only see them when we're dead. When they're dead from Boom, not yeah. as big a hit as something, but again, he's kind of doing the same thing as. Uh, and Donny Cates is kind of doing the same thing. Like they're lending effort to the mainstream comic books. And they're also doing the creator-owned stuff that's uh, desirable to television. Scott Snyder as well. Scott another, Snyder another as series well. that I really like, Bitterroot. I really liked Bitterroot. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, I, I that would be that to me is like Netflix potential right there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's awesome. And yeah. I think it would make I think it'd make a really great series. But uh, you know, as far as like I said, it's got to be it's going to be creator-owned stuff, and it's going to be from image or you know from definitely watch mark miller anything he puts in a comic is likely going to end up on streaming millerverse stuff yeah <laughs> i mean and and do not and do not sleep on invincible you know don't. even still as that series goes on it's going to have that walking dead thing going on for it right yeah i mean it's a huge another huge cast of characters you know in a series you know that that miller you know that's not miller <laughs> Uh, Kirkman. <laughs> Kirkman. Oh my God, I got Miller in my mind. But it, Kirkman just loves to do these huge casts with these huge sweeping worlds, you know. And, what do you think uh, about his Skybound stuff? Because it feels like almost every comic at Skybound has been created with the idea that it could be yeah. transferred over to streaming. It feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's stuff to look for, you know. If, if, if you like it and it's something that you enjoy, then buy it and maybe sit on it. But I wouldn't go out and buy stuff just to have it. You know, if it's something, if you're like, well, this isn't really good, don't just buy it just to have it in the half chance that somebody might turn into a series. You know, I think that's silly. But uh, buy the stuff that you like, and if there's a good chance that if you really like it, then somebody else really likes it too, and it'll 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 do well. So yeah, I've got one guy comes in the shop he buys every damn thing you know he buys every he's one of those whales that you know as far as independence like that go you know he'll buy like 10 copies of number one you know he he's like oh this is going to be a new series i guarantee it or, uh, you know and he, he buys like that so he sometimes sometimes he hits most of the time he misses mm -hmm. and I, i'm sure that he's not going to come out ahead on it <laughs> but hmm. There's a lot of good horror comics that are original that are coming out right now. And you can yeah. definitely, horror is always going to be a demand, so it's another place. You go find something horror-related, a lot of that stuff's going to be adaptable. So I think we've had a pretty good discussion. We talked about the Comic Leak auction and some potential softening in certain parts of the market. Action Comics, number one, ain't coming down, but you know potentially a lot of the stuff in the Silver and Bronze Age, where there was a lot of supply, it, it was being priced as if it was very rare. We're seeing some softening there. We've also got, you know, with the CGC sale, sale they're requiring uh, vintage comics. We're going to be getting NFTs. There's going to be likely some manipulation in the market in the future. And as, as Pele says, make sure you buy those comics right now. And we gave you some new creators and characters to watch out for. Definitely let us know you, who do you think we should be looking at and maybe investing in if you're looking at long-term potential as far as, uh, you know, upward, upward tra trajectory on prices in collections. Uh, Paley, do you have anything else to say before we? Yeah, get out I mean, of here? definitely buy the books because you don't have anybody but to blame but yourself if you if it, down years and years down the road if you you know could have bought something and now and then later on it's just not available it's not there anymore and you know I'm not saying buy now I'm saying keep that in your mind when you're shopping in the future uh, I'll try to keep people. In, in the loop as far as when will be the what i think will be a great time to buy uh in cards it's already happened you know in, in as far as magic cards it's already happened there sports cards it's already happened now is the time uh comics it'll probably be by the end of the year that we'll feel the, we'll see the full you know we'll see where it's fully dipped down in the sideways action so uh but it's not a it's 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 not exactly like things are at their tip top right now. So if it's something that you've really really wanted, go ahead. Just make sure you get the best price on it always. All right, you got anything else to say? Yeah, I do. Hit your local comic shop up for their back issues, Damn obviously, right. and go to a convention. 
at least as long as we can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because that's where you're going to get deals. That's where you can talk to somebody. That's where you can see the book in person. Yeah. And uh, maybe you got a trade that's being, you know, that would be willing to be made. So there's a lot of things that you can do to get those comics. And if it's something that's really hard to get or something that's out of print, even if it's a book, and you're like, man, I can't live without this, you got to get that book. You know, because uh, it probably won't be around for a while. Definitely. We, we miss Doc on the broadcast today. Yeah. We hope he's doing well. When this comes out on Monday, maybe we'll have some more information. But, uh, Doc, we're, we're, uh, we're praying for you, and we hope everything is doing yeah, well. Yeah, we miss you, buddy. Hope, you didn't, hope you're doing a lot better. Get you some rest. Yeah, wash your ass. Yeah, that Definitely too. Definitely wash your ass. Definitely. 